und die Hände und so. Spent in good company, and all the harm I ever did, alas, it was to none but me. And all I've done for want of wits to memory now I can read. The parting glass, good night and joy be with you. If I had money to spend and leisure time to sit the while, there is a fair maid in this town. That's all he has my heart beat by. Her rosy cheeks and ruby lips, I own she has my heart beat by. So fill to me the parting glass, good night and joy be. Of all the comrades that I've known, they're sorry for my going away. And all the sweethearts that I've had, they'd wish me one more day to stay. But as it falls unto my lot, that I should rise and you should rise. I gently rise and softly fall. Good night and joy be Let's say thank you very much for coming along today. Um, some of you have come a very long way, um, and some of you have come from locally, which is nice to have a mix of different places. Some of you I know very well, and I've known for many years, including my mother. Um, and some of you are new faces to me, but I'm sure um, mum will be familiar to you. Um, you're all here to help us say goodbye to my dad, um, Will Biscardi, and uh, we have a order of service here, which I will be reading from, um, but I like to add lib, so this seems like a good opportunity. Um, Dad was a very, very gregarious person in small doses. He wouldn't do it much, but he would do it very well for a short time. And I'm sure you've all shared that, that charming little moment with him, a little chat while he's having a cigarette. Um, and I'm sure you all have fond memories. And this is really what today for us is about. It's not about the sadness of him passing, it's about celebrating a life well led, a life that he enjoyed, at least most of, not all of them, he never enjoy everything, but he had a good, good run, um, and I think that he ended up in a very nice place, a very welcoming place. So I'm going to read through um, a little bit about my dad's life, um, which is here in the booklet if you haven't seen it yet, uh, which is a far more... Bizarre life than you may have expected, just in terms of how he's moved around. Um, 
and I'm sure it, you won't have heard some of the stories, but there are plenty of them. So um, Dad was born in 1943 um, in what was then called Madras in India. Um, he, his birth wasn't registered until his mother brought him home by train um, to Whitefield near Bangalore, and apparently uh, he was very swiftly baptised and his mother was scolded by the, uh, by the priest, um, having undertaken a very perilous journey, actually, at the time, I, I believe. Uh, the, the, the train was actually attacked by bandits, yes. <laughs> right. um, these are the sorts of stories that Dad never would tell you. He'd, he'd tell you about something else, like the best route to take to get somewhere, or maybe something about the cameras that um, he was playing with at the time. But those are the sorts of stories that... that <laughs> He was full of it, if you actually go deeply enough, but very, very seldom got an opportunity to. Um, so, he was the youngest of a large family, um, and their father died when he was just eight years old. Um, his sister, Vivian, um, who sadly passed away just a month before he did, um, was then only 16, and uh, she lied about her age to get a job as an airline hostess um, to be able to support her mother and, and her brothers. And her sisters. Uh, Will spent a lot of time in the company of his brother Bert, who was uh, five years older, and uh, he trained him in boxing, which he was always quite keen on, although you may not have thought it. Um, he had very, very, very many happy memories of his childhood, um, including things like riding the horse of a Mysore Lancer, um, being taken out on a pleat launch around Bombay Harbour, um, and spending time with uh, friends near the lake, where they would sometimes ride water buffalo. And I remember him telling me about some of these stories when I was a child, and, and they helped me... You know, it helped shape me into the person I have today with an interest that I had today. Um, several of his friendships from then became lifelong, um, and he has friends who, was, who are here today to be able to say goodbye. Um, and he was finally persuaded to get a British, uh, British nationality so he could get a passport, be able to make over tree, overseas trips um, to see his scattered friends and family all over the place. And his first trip was to see Heather in, in Switzerland, I believe. Um, so Will had his 17th birthday on a ship bringing him to England. Um, so he was only 16 when he left, and if you look at the back of your order of service, you actually see a photograph of his passport photo when he was 16 years old. Um, and that passport was only valid for a year. It expired on the 12th of March. Um, sorry, no, it expired on the 13th of March, and he arrived in England on the 12th. So he had one day's grace to get into the country, um, and he slipped in uh, with his characteristic uh, good timing. Um, he enjoyed the voyage, um, but then he obviously faced life as a 17-year-old in a strange new land where he, he only knew a few people. Um, and he was really grateful to them, especially the support he received from his sister-in-law, Jackie, um, and her family. Um, and he, that included lodging with Nan, who looked after him very well. He played football for works teams uh, and for Alexandra Palace, and hockey in the company of his brother, Bert. By the time he was 24, he was living in North London, working and enjoying the nightlife, especially at the Whiskey A Go Go in Soho and the Char in Barnet. And that's where he met the girl he was to meet, he married, and for the next 52 years, well, it would have been in two days' time. Well, marriage. Yeah. Married, yeah. yes, yes. Um, and I have no doubts that his fantastic dancing <laughs> over what yeah. caught her eye. Yeah, definitely. He could certainly move. If you ever saw him dancing, it was, it was magic. And if you never did, I feel sorry for you because it was magic. <laughs> so um, Dad and Mum, uh, Kate and Will, lived in London for the, about four years and then moved to Hertfordshire, um, which is where Mum's originally from, um, after Dad had a serious motorbike accident. He worked in various occupations uh, and he was a particularly skilled storeman. Um, and his favourite job of all, uh, and he did, he did lots of various things, he, he did things like driving taxis when I was a kid and, and driving vans and trucks, and he loved driving. Um, and that, that job that he really enjoyed most of all was the mobile truck park salesman because he got a chance to combine his skills as a storesman and his love of driving which uh, if anyone ever spoke to my dad they'd know how much he enjoyed driving. For my stag do he drove from Hertfordshire to Ilfracombe, um, the very very edge of, of Devon kind of formal uh, boundaries there and uh, then uh, had breakfast had a little snooze and then drove straight back again because <laughs> um, he wasn't up for the drinking. Very sensible in that respect. Um, it was when I was working in Hertfordshire that I was born, um, so that was uh, some, some good 40-odd years ago, I won't say how many. Uh, and Dad wasn't particularly ambitious in his career, but Mum really was. And uh, one of the things which was absolutely fantastic about him was how supportive and encouraging he was as she progressed in her career. And eventually she became a university lecturer, um, and there's no way she could have done it without him and his support, and she will always be grateful to him for that. So Dad actually ended up taking quite a lot of responsibility for me as I grew up. Well, um, that was a mistake. 
<laughs> yeah, for better or worse, um, I, I, I'm happy enough. So, uh, um, encourage my love of nature and wildlife. So this for me, I know Dad would absolutely love this place. And it's a shame he didn't actually find it while he's still alive to enjoy it. But he can enjoy it for the rest of the time it takes for his bones to turn into the rest of the universe uh, and go back to stardust when we all came from originally. So, um, yeah, he was proud of me, um, especially, uh, partly for my career, I worked as a natural history curator, so I, I've taken my passion through to my, uh, to kind of my, my adult career now, um, and I very much enjoy it. But mostly, I think he was just happy that I met Melissa, um, and married the greatest woman in the world. Sorry, Mum, but... Oh, yeah, it's yeah. all right. <laughs> I think she's yeah, everyone does. She's fantastic. Um, and uh, Dad used to love coming over to Ireland to visit. He'd come and, and he'd come visit me with his family, and uh, he, he was very close with some of the friends over there as well. So he, he kept in contact with everyone, um, and, and was very happy to see everyone and see how the kids were growing up and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's one of the things that he really enjoyed. Um, now, when Dad was 49, he had his first heart attack, um, and he wasn't able to work for a while, which was very tough um, on him and part time. But um, he got better, and he returned to work, to driving. Uh, and then he ended up working in the Royal Mail Distribution Centre. And as fortune would have it, he met up with a former colleague when he was there, um, who was Gary Fisher. Uh, and it was actually Gary who spotted that um, Will was having his uh, second heart attack um, one day at work, 13, 13 years off his first heart attack. Um, and we're very, very grateful to Gary um, for the fact that he gave us an extra 16 years with my dad. Um, it's, a, it's a good thing to have. And this last heart attack, obviously, was the one that took him from us. Um, but, you know, considering how long he had his heart issues, he did pretty well out there. So, uh, with retirement on Kate's cards, um, she and Dad decided to move away from Hertfordshire um, and to spend, well, it's actually spent a very happy couple of years. It was a wonderful couple of years, yes, um, it really was. Searching this area and, and kind of the, the southeast for, uh, for places to live, and they were checking out things like the climate statistics, um, looking at uh, state agent sites making sure there were no houses with stairs, um, for example, just to make sure they could find the right place for them. Um, and then we came to where he wanted to be all in the first place anyway. And he came to Suffolk. <laughs> and uh, Suffolk is somewhere that Dad had always wanted to live because he, he had fond memories from spending time here when he was, when he was a teenager, a late teenager, and one of his brothers-in-law was stationed here in the RAF. Um, so his sister, uh, his cousins Joy and Colleen were in Ipswich, which is obviously not, not far away for those of you who don't know the area. Um, and uh, having found the house, uh, Dad then spent about three months supervising its renovation before um, Mum and Dad moved in in 2013. So those years were among Dad's happiest. Um, and despite his declining health, he and Mum found themselves having a wonderful bunch of neighbours um, who were respectful of privacy but happy to help out and support. Um, it doesn't get better than that. Uh, the Moon and Mushroom is like an extension of home, uh, and uh, Nicky and Mark, who are part of the family, really. Uh, well, Mark is actually part of the family. He's my cousin. Um, but Nicky's like, um, they, they've had to head on, unfortunately, for everything, because they're going to go and get the Moon and Mushroom ready for us uh, to head over there as soon as we finish with it, um, for some food and some drinks. Um, and Dad quickly made friends, uh, finding the folk sessions at the Low House in Latsfield a real highlight. Uh, it reignited his love of playing the harmonica, um, but he was still practicing before he took it public. Um, and we're very grateful to Brian, um, he's here today for singing that into the, into the ground. So at this point, um, I'd just like to ask, uh, is Lorraine here? Lorraine's here. Lorraine's here. Um, I wanted to ask some friends to say a few words. And uh, if you want to say anything about Dad, any of your memories or any little stories, we are going to set up a camera um, in the Moon and Mushroom. Because so much of Dad's, so many of Dad's friends and family scattered around the world, um, they, a lot of them can't be here. So it's really nice to be able to record this, which is why we have some cameras here, so that we can share some of the stories and some of the thoughts about Dad. Um, because as I say, although it's sad that he's gone, it's happy to celebrate his life, and it's great to be able to share those stories that not everyone would have heard because he wouldn't share them. So I will shut up now um, and hand on over to Lorraine. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, the best thing I can say about Will is that he used to give me wonderful advice of how to drive. <laughs> oh, God! Uh, he told me how to get to the moon and mushroom, which took me four hours from Stradford. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, and I'm still not very good at listening to sat-navs, 
fans or anything else. And I think he'd be very, very proud of me today as I got here in under an hour. Which the journey should have only took 30 minutes. <laughs> so I do thank you, Will, and keep your little head above mine when I'm driving to places that I don't know. Many thanks. Thank you very much. Does anyone else want to say anything? in this kind of souped up car with alloy wheels and a big spoiler with progressive trance belting into the, <laughs> out of the car. <laughs> and I just thought, oh my gosh, he's so funny. Um, and he was, he was just hilarious. He has so many funny stories. Um, and very often driving around the road just like my car stick with this <laughs> going around the corners. Um, but yeah, yeah, we're all going to miss him. Anyone else like to say anything or shall we go to the moon and mushroom? Save it for the pub. <laughs> in, in that case, I'll, I'll just say, this last little bit, um, Will was a lax Catholic, um, but he was always drawn to Buddhism. And with thanks to R.G., who is a friend who is very, very deeply Buddhist, this is a prayer from the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Uh, it's actually a prayer for the dying, but I feel the last lines are particularly appropriate to this place. And if anybody else would like to join me in throwing flowers into the grave, while well, I say this, through your blessing, grace and guidance, through the power of the light that streams from you, may all my negative karma, destructive emotions, obscurations and blockages be purified and removed. May I know myself forgiven for all the harm I may have thought and done. May I accomplish this profound practice of power and die a good and peaceful death. And through the triumph of my death, may I be able to benefit all other beings, living and dead. So we now invite you to join us at the moon. No worries.